John Stiernesen has been named the new DA leader. He faced off with Balin Tuli for the top job over the weekend. Absolutely, and uh, wasting no time, Stiernesen promised to lay a foundation for the DA to one day form a part of national government. Well, he joins us now to talk more about his plans moving forward. Good morning to you, Mr. Stiernesen, and perhaps I should start with congratulations as being elected officially as DA leader. I mean, was this one anticipated? Was this a land? Slant or were there a bit of a hiccups there where you felt that perhaps your opposing uh, you know, nominee then, Balin Duli, might just take this one? Well, not at all. I, mean, I went around the country and I did the hard yards to get elected. I did over 35 virtual town halls and in-person meetings across every single province of the country. Uh, elections are won by putting a plan before people and getting them to vote for it. And I think that I did the hard yards that were required. And I think it's reflected in the result. Uh, over 80% of the DA's Congress have placed their trust in me. I'm deeply humbled by that. But I think it does give me a, a, a majority and a mandate to be able to continue to do what needs to be done to get the DA battle ready for the 2021 20, local government election. John, Jane here, congratulations firstly. Time is short, a lot to get through, so let's get on to some of the nitty-gritty uh, issues here. Many people say there really is no change in the visuals. It's a, still a party for white people. I mean, that is crucial now, particularly in South Africans' environment. How does what happened yesterday change what the party's going to do going forward? Well, I think, first of all, you've got to dispel the myth that this is a party for white people. It absolutely isn't. And anyone who saw the visuals of the Congress over the weekend... Anyone who sees the diversity and the leadership that's been elected would see this is a party that is serious about becoming a home for all South Africans, regardless of their color, their geography, uh, what their background is. We want to bring South Africans together on a common set of values. I think over the last couple of years, we've had to slide away in some of those values. And I think that we now have an opportunity, as I've set out very clearly, to draw a line under the mistakes of the past and to be an ally of the people as we embark upon this new journey to take power away from the state and give it back to the people where it rightfully belongs. And how do you plan to take back that power, um, just in terms of action points, um, John, especially uh, because, I mean, I can imagine uh, for, for the longest time we've heard from your town halls, your, your, your campaigning that you would like, obviously, to be that leader to take the ANC out of its uh, governance and its uh, you know, role there as the leading party. How do you plan to do so? Well, by going out to South Africans and showing them that our, our policies can get 13 million people out of the unemployment queue that have been pushed there by the failed policies of this government, and how we can have real empowerment for the 13 million South Africans who live in poverty, less than 992 rand a month. We've got to go out there and sell a compelling offer and vision uh, of hope and change for those South Africans, that there is another way, uh, that the despair that we see around the country uh, can be beaten if we make the right choices in terms of being able to uh, build a policy suite that actually focuses on lifting people out of poverty and into opportunity. The first stepping stone for that is going to be the local government elections next year. I believe there are a large number of municipalities around the country where the DA stands a very good chance of either winning an outright majority or in some form of coalition being able to unseat the ANC and then to be able to demonstrate in those particular municipalities, our life can change uh, if you uh, are able to back a party that cares about people rather than about accumulating state. It's state power that lies at the heart of every single one of the problems that we face in South Africa, whether it's South African Airways, Eskom, uh, unemployment. It's an overpowerful state that has sucked power out of the hands of the people and accumulated in the hands of a very small group of powerful individuals who then abuse that power to enrich themselves and their cronies, keeping people uh, locked out of opportunity, 30 million South Africans who don't even have an opportunity to be able to even get onto, uh, uh, get a hand up in, in South Africa. Uh, John, in order to snatch ANC voters, and, and there are clearly many who are not, no longer impressed with the party, and, and you can see why. Uh, let's talk about what Ntuli had said in the past. She said that past and pre present leaders basically slam dissenting vo voices within the party. And let's talk about Helen Ziller here. I mean, you know, she is 
somebody who has changed much in the past. A lot has been said about her political shift. Do you think her reappointment is something that has the possibility of overshadowing your success going forward? Let's just, let's just clear up first. It's not an appointment. It was an election. Helen won 69 percent of the vote uh, of a 2,000-member Congress. Uh, that clearly shows that she is the candidate that the party wants. Uh, no appointment was an election. Secondly, anybody who wants to build a new majority in South Africa, anybody who wants to be able to demonstrate the alternative, would be absolutely crazy not to have someone like Helen Zilla around the table. Not only has she spoken about the capable state, she delivered the capable state to the Western Cape where she governs. Not, she didn't talk about fighting unemployment. She led an administration in the Western Cape uh, where there's now the lowest unemployment rates in the country, where you have working schools. I think anybody at any political organization uh, would, would, would be completely mad not to want to have Helen Zilla around the table. But let me be very clear. There is only one leader of the DA, and that is me. And I intend to lead with my own convictions and with my own vigor. And I'm certainly not going to be overshadowed by anybody else going forward. I make the decisions with the federal executive, and I will make sure that my mark is stamped on this particular time of the Democratic Alliance's history. This is the mandate that's been given to me by an overwhelming number of Congress delegates. This wasn't a closely one, uh, one race. This is an overwhelming mandate that's been yeah. given to me to continue down the path of what I have been doing in the DA for the last year. And I suppose, John, the very same mandate was given to Musi Maimani, but he did not have staying power. He resigned um, alongside some of your prominent uh, former leaders when we talk about the likes of Herman Mashaba, Lindy, or Mazibuko. Just to name a few, what makes you believe that you will not take that route where you might be cornered into perhaps someday resigning um, under pressure, as we've seen with some of your former DA members and leaders? Well, I've been in this party for over 20 years, and I've served in a variety of levels. I will never walk out on my party. I believe passionately that this party is the only party that can offer an alternative, and I think it's the only party that can be a builder at the center of a new majority in South Africa. Uh, you don't walk off the project when you don't get your way, because the project is bigger than individuals. Whatever happens, whatever the future holds, I will stay committed to the values and principles that we've redefined this weekend, as well as our program of action, and as well as our mission of being the core of a new majority by 2024. Uh, that is a lot of work ahead of us, uh, and it requires people who can go the distance, not people who falter at the first hurdle. John, I mean... We touched on it briefly, or you did rather. I mean, the time for a strong opposition in South Africa is now. Just talk to us about what you see as the importance of having a strong opposition in South Africa. I think a strong opposition is very important, but I also think there is a duty on any opposition to put forward a compelling alternative. And I think what the mistakes that the DAs have made in the past is spending its time just critiquing the ANC. Mm. I think what voters in South Africa are looking for is for a new alternative, new ideas, new policies. And I think that if the DA, is, as we've been able to show during the COVID crisis, is able to hold government accountable on the one hand, but then also to offer workable alternatives on the other, not shining a light to show people how deep the hole is, but to shine a light to show people the way out of the hole. I think in the environment that we're heading into, the deepest economic depression in a generation, growing unemployment, a lot more poverty and suffering, I think there's an opportunity for a party that is able to say to South Africans, look, we know things aren't great, we're holding government accountable, but we've got a plan to fix this and set it out in spectacular technicolor on the doorsteps across South Africa. I think there's huge opportunity that lies ahead for the Democratic Alliance. All right, new DA leader, John C. Hazen, thank you so much for your time. And again, congratulations. Congratulations.